Welcome, and thanks for joining us for this edition of SCOPE. The Coral Triangle Day was celebrated by Conservation and Environment Protection Authority and partners on Wednesday 9th June at the University of Papua New Guinea's Motupore Island Research Center within the Bootless Bay. It was commemorated along with World Oceans Day. SIPA with stakeholders and partners like Total Waste Management removed plastic waste and other non-degradable garbage around the mangrove patches before new trees were planted. It was also a day to witness demonstrations of the innovative way of reviving coral reef by local NGO Hiri Coral. Igor Gary, founder of Hiri Coral from Tubu Sereya village, was saddened to see that the coral reef that he once enjoyed has been destroyed. He feared that his children will not know what he experienced in the past. I come back and much of what I used to enjoy is, uh, in my childhood is not there anymore. And so uh, I'm wondering what's happened in, uh, in a period of uh, 30 years as so much have happened and, and, and so much is disappearing at a rate where like my kids who are uh, uh, years uh, nine, uh, seven and five, unfortunately uh, I'm not able to see most of what I used to see. Gary went to Australia to do PhD studies and he was asked to choose what he wants to base his thesis on. He decided to take up coral reef restoration because it was something close to his heart. In 2018, when I uh, came back, I just got a couple of my family uh, members together and we grabbed, uh, got a, a few uh, uh, metal frames with a few cables and we swam out as far as where the boat is in Tubisari village. So we collected those small fragments and we started taking them to the, to the coral frames. And we didn't even swim too far because obviously the idea is for that uh, those small uh, community level initiative to be uh, to be engaging and to be uh, done by a anybody else. We don't want to hire a big boat to go out too far. It was a bonus for officers of the Conservation and Environment Protection Authority and its partners and stakeholders to witness a demonstration of how the coral reef is being replanted. Just single tiny pieces and see how, uh, how they've grown over three, four months. So what happens is when they've reached, probably in the next few months, I mean mixing the cement underwater. So I'll just go see where those ribs have been really badly, uh, or die finished lemon. I'll just attach this to, um, use a, a lily, uh, old clothes brush, rousing lily dirty old stone, and I'll just sink this with a bit of cement or some flower whatever. And then that, you know, it's, it's found his new, new home. So M by grow and a plenty more fish by come. After one year, the coral reef began to grow again. So Gary and his local community started to seek small financial assistance to fund the coral reef restoration within the Bootless Bay area. Gary says he is excited to know that something good is coming out of this and in the future, the lost coral reef will be revived. He hopes to extend to other parts of the Hiri Coast and PNG as well. Sea Women of Melanie says another local NGO working with the Coral Reefs Triangle in assisting local communities in PNG. What we do is we go out, survey reefs, that is we take um, pictures of the reef just to see um, how healthy the reef is. And then we come back, we present the results and then if they agree with us, then we set up what is known as a locally managed marine area. There are over 43 proposed locally managed marine areas, 36 in Milan Bay Province, 6 in Manus, and 1 in Kimbe. So apart from the 43, some more areas are being surveyed in Central Province. Part of the Sea Women of Melanesia program is um, the training program that we conduct. So the participants, we get um, volunteers and interested um, young females 
we train them um, in marine conservation science, scuba diving as well, and reef monitoring techniques. So what we basically do is um, we, we conduct reef surveying using geotag cameras. So that's one of the uh, methods that we're using to monitor and survey um, reefs in parts of Papua New Guinea. How is coral reef related to the marine life? Dr. Agustin Munkadze, Associate Professor in Marine Sciences at UPNG, explains by referring to a presentation done by Igor Gary earlier. You remember he put three fish pictures on there. One of them is a parrot fish, the other one on the black one on the right was a, is a surgeon fish. Uh, both of those fish are they call them the herbivores. Herbivores means that they eat plant material on the reef. Uh, their role on the reef is actually to clean the reef. They're like the laundry machine on the reef. Uh, when you see a lot of uh, nutrients like uh, maybe sewage or, or runoff from land that brings uh, nitrates, phosphate, those are fertilizers. Once it goes into the water, algae, they love that stuff. They'll quickly grow. Now, if algae overtake a reef, uh, coral won't settle and grow on it. They don't like algae. Uh, and so nature has did it in such a way that those fish, their job is to keep mowing the, the reef, reef uh, base down. Uh, so it's kept clean, clean so that um, corals can attach. Dr. Munkadze further explained that once those fish are depleted by overfishing, there's no more grazes, so algae will grow over the reef. And when that happens, the algae will take over the coral. And so some of the dying of the reef is probably due to climate change and the temp temperature problem, because the corals, uh, they have a, a, an algae that lives in the tissues. Uh, they call it a, a dinoflagellate. Uh, those ones are actually sitting in there and they actually do the photosynthesis uh, role. They photosynthesize and the coral uses that. So if you get a temperature increase because of climate change, uh, the, the dinoflagellates actually leave the coral tissue and then they call bleaching. Coral will just become pale and, and they can die over time. Uh, the other problem is, of course, this. If we're fishing too much, the grazing uh, grazes on the reef because we, f we speak on fishing or dynamiting or whatever, that balance is also brought away now. And that means that things are no longer in balance. So those are probably two possible causes. And then, of course, maybe pollutants, maybe the third thing. When we come back, conservation partners are reminded of the Coral Triangle Pact made in 2009. Welcome back. World Ocean Day was also observed at UPNG's research center on Motupore Island. It is part of Coral Triangle Day. Papua New Guinea is one of six countries committed to protecting the coral reef. In PNG, various stakeholders are responsible for meeting each of the five goals captured in 2009 declaration. The Motupore Island Research Center has done extensive work for many years in protecting the marine ecosystem. The Coral Triangle is a day dedicated to remember the six countries that have signed a declaration in 2009 to protect the last remaining area of coral reef in the world. These countries are Papua New Guinea, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Timor-Leste, and Solomon Islands. Yvonne Tio, Executive Manager of SIPAS Marine Environment Division said, the Coral Triangle Initiative is a multilateral partnership with the aim of conserving and sustainably managing the marine and local resources. The six heads of government signed the partnership in 2009, and the regional plan of action was launched. Its country was also required to produce their own plan of action. The Coral Triangle Initiative is a multilateral partnership amongst the six countries um, with the aim of conserving and sustainably managing the marine and the coastal resources for Papua New Guinea. We didn't call it the national uh, plan of action, but we are calling it the Papua New Guinea Marine Program. So this is the document 
that was recently launched um, last week during the Protected Areas Forum on Wednesday. So this document, it, it, uh, it outlines all the actions that targets the partners to be, uh, to be implementing this program. And out of this program, we also have the investment plan, which has been fully costed out. The PNG Marine Program contains five goals which are implemented by the relevant government agencies, all coordinating with SEPA. Goal number one, priority scape with SEPA taking the lead. Goal number two, ecosystem approach to fisheries management, NFA takes the lead. Goal number three, marine protected areas, also SEPA taking the lead. Goal number four, climate change adaptation with Climate Change Protection Authority taking the lead. And goal number five, threatened species, also SIPA taking the lead. Theo said more research needs to be done to make informed decisions, and this is where the UPNG School of Marine Sciences comes in. Associate Professor Dr. Agustin Munkaje has been a lecturer of marine sciences for 30 years, and his desire is to see another Papua New Guinean come to this level before he retires. I've always tried to acquire as much skill as possible because then, then I can probably, lo once, once I localize, uh, it's, it's also a responsibility, M meaning that uh, uh, the field of marine science, you don't necessarily have to go to Australia to do it. You don't have to necessarily go to the U.S. with it. We need to bring that here. Motupore Island Research Center plays an important role in the study of marine sciences but is it up to standard to meet the advancing science demands? We are not quite there yet in terms of the support we need, like some infrastructure. But uh, I think we should we should uh, uh, accept that fact and, and see how we can uh, do with what we have on hand. And, and if there are collaborating institutions or if we can get a grant that brings uh, maybe a piece of equipment that we can bring in, but uh, make sure that equipment can also be shared by others too. USAID has been a great supporter of PNG in its effort to mitigate against climate change and its preservation of the natural environment and resources. Since the inception of the Coral Triangle Initiative in 2008, USAID has provided over 50 million US dollars in assistance to the six Coral Triangle countries. The time to act is now and it really requires uh, public and private. And also just wanted to acknowledge uh, total waste management as far as private sector, um, uh, their participation and well, because I think we all have a key piece. It's not just government, it's government, it's academia, it's public, it's private, it's development partners coming together. And it's great to see the marine policy and strategy to sort of try to implement. PNG is known as an environment superpower for one Motupore Island alone has 38 species of the world's 40 species of mangroves. Therefore, it is important to protect what we have. Protecting the environment is a joint effort. Participants who attended the event on Motupore cleaned the coastline and planted new mangroves. After the break, Pogera people anticipate mine opening as many continue to struggle since its closure. Welcome back to Scope. Pogera mine is preparing towards its reopening later this year. The Prime Minister traveled there early this month to further deliver the message to landowners himself and settle concerns surrounding equity shares, royalties and environmental impact, a few of the pending issues that existed when the mine ceased operation more than a year ago. The ceasing of operations not only impacted revenue coming into the country, it directly impacted people's lives. People lost jobs, lost business opportunities and revenue. Even basic services like health and education could not function as well as they did when the mine was active. As Susan Oriape reports, many families returned to the informal sector to make ends meet.
Berry Gold in Ega province is one of PNG's longest running gold mines operating for 30 years. It began production in 1990 and was developed and operated by Placer Dome, which was later acquired in 2006 by Berry Gold, the world's largest gold mining company at that time. As a significant economic contributor, the mine also brought with it controversial issues. After 30 years of production in late April 2020, amid the COVID-19 pandemic and PNG facing economic crisis, the government made a surprising announcement to end the mining lease on a gold mine that contributed roughly 10% of PNG's total exports. The mine was the lifeline and its closure affected local businesses livelihood and job opportunities for the people of Pogera Valley, leaving behind a realization of the economic and social impacts it had on the lives of Pogera residents and the landowners. The closure of the mine has meant loss of business opportunities. Schools have little resource to operate on as they lack proper classrooms and water supply. Parents cannot pay school fees as many have been left unemployed. Many families have turned to the informal market, which has become their only means of survival since the mine closed. Street selling is a common sight everywhere in the Pogera Valley. When the mine closed, Pogera joint venture ceased to employ local contractors, including SMEs who were once engaged to supply fresh food to the mine's mess and vehicle hired to assist in the mine's operation. This like one plus year, it has been a very challenging year. Now it was really hard for especially the women and children, the elderly. Me plus talo pogera lang and me plus feeling big plus pain stress. Because most of the time when me plus work low, depend on mind that's all. Ground me plus am alright, but plenty am wara pula. In a good plan, all coco grow. Though me plug at all a tram lo growing kumu, a tram lo walking some plus something, a kind of some, but stable food them hard straight. Me plus a sim law. Also, I'm selling the market, Leon, and me plus a buy. So, this one something been come up, or this la one plan year now. Old man, Mary, me plan line of place, me plan feeling big plan pen straight. Me plan feeling big plan pen straight, that's all. Uh, now come one year now and finish now. Now I'm um, framework and government from them developer to plus sign him. And me plus feeling must them it is a big relief and it is a good news for the people of Pogera. Why? Because firstly, I'm like me plus some plus something too. Where me plus can prepare all this like an event when time my name close. Now, me plus strongly believe was um, sustainable development after the mine close. I must come up with a priority block up man a developer so that me plus must ready logo in that time my name go finish. Um, after much negotiation between the government and Berry Gold, a framework agreement was handed over to the Bogera land owners in Payam Station on the 4th of June. The binding agreement will pave way for landowner negotiations. The deal not only outlines prospective benefit sharing principles and mine operating plans, but also lays out the final compliance that must be done before mining can resume. Now, MRE, MRE, and finish, and finish one of the black contract, and finish. We plan to start a new plan, and we plan to get the money, and we plan to get the The situation isn't all doom and gloom. Pogero Mine continues to support the district health services through operator Berwick New Guinea Limited. Since the reopening of the Payam Hospital in 2019, BNL has continued to provide financial support towards the operation of the hospital. 
In the same year, BNL provided direct assistance to the Anger Provincial Health Authority with more than 2.25 million kina to support the refurbishment and reopening of the hospital and additional 80,000 kina in September 2000. Payam Hospital has 55 staff, 30 are casuals, and the hospital management is hopeful that there will be more specialist doctors and nurses employed to serve the hospital. Due to, from the support of uh, given us financially, uh, we are able to maintain the staff and uh, keep them here. Uh, and hopefully with the uh, uh, mind coming back, we'll continue with the staff, we'll probably increase uh, a few more staff to get it. But with this 50 staff, it's just uh, skeletal staffing. It's not enough to, uh, it's not in, uh, even uh, adequate to run the hospital. At some stages, we have very limited staff running uh, each department. Barrick President and CEO Mark Bristow, when handing the framework during his visit to Pogera said, he would ensure job opportunities will be made available for Papua New Guineans and especially for the people of Pogera Valley. He believes the mine will focus more on direct benefits for Papua New Guineans and that Berwick is a committed partner to the people and development of an emerging market in the new Pogera. For the people of Pogera and Henga, the reopening of the mine starts a new chapter for the township and with it renewed hope for a better future. Papua New Guinea is, a, is a, an emerging market and it needs that investment, it needs that commitment, it needs education, it needs health care, those primary principal rights of humanity, potable water, uh, primary health and primary education. And, uh, and, and again, you know that uh, Pogra and the BNL, along with the, the, the Inga government, has made those a priority and we will continue to do that. That ends another episode of Scope, a kind reminder to apply simple measures to prevent the transmission of the coronavirus. Regularly wash your hands with soap and water, cough or sneeze into your elbow, and exercise social distancing. If you are feeling sick, please stay at home. You can also call the COVID-19 hotline number for more information or assistance.